Okay, power rankings for the upcoming stage of NAL. That is going to be NAL stage two of the 2022 season. So if you want to make your own tier list of this, if you want my format, I guess, uh, a nice ad. Yeah, you can go to R6 NAL 2022 teams. Uh, just search that up on uh, tier list maker, what's tiermaker.com, and you can find it and probably there's other formats as well. But if you want to use this one, the, the format I have it in currently isn't the original one. If you load it up, there's going to be, there's going to be these 10 teams and then there's going to be 10 tiers. I shaved it down to five uh, because it fits on the screen better but the tiers aren't going to be significant i'm just going to have it in order so there'll just be two teams in each tier but again it will just be in uh, the order that i just dictated with my mouse okay so we're going to start at the bottom we're going to work our way up but first if you're not fully aware of which team has which logo i'll go down the line this is the order in which they placed last stage so first through 10th we have astralis oxygen dark zero xset space station Beast Coast, Parabellum, Sonics, TSM, and Mirage. And, well, I think Mirage is the, the weakest looking team at the moment. They did poorly last stage, and uh, they got edged out by TSM in terms of the standings, uh, but they did beat TSM. So, coming into this stage, it looks like it's going to be a super, super competitive stage. Uh, Beast Coast and Xset both came out and sort of surprised. I think people had both of them, some people had both of them pegged as sort of the the better looking teams of the bottom half with the bottom half being mostly either weaker or uh, weaker looking teams or teams that was unclear how good they would be and X that did surprise making top four and then Beast Coast I think still surprised I think some people had them placed lower than that I think that's exactly where I had them on my power rankings but um, you know of course not that I had the exact right power rankings some teams I had above them ended up below them vice versa whatever but right yeah those those two sort of surprised Parabellum did okay uh, and it ended up being uh, Sonics and TSN that didn't place too well Astralis was one of the other teams that was sort of in the bottom they ended up in very first place but uh, that, that was quite hard to predict maybe you could have thought they were going to do well but not that well because they had a really bad stage three last year and they didn't make a change uh, in a player and a coach but okay maybe we'll talk about that more when we get to them so yeah mirage changing out two players they were one of only two teams to make changes they they switched out two players so did parabellum and it seems like parabellum changes were more impressive but we'll talk about that also in a second yeah mirage changing out thomas and razor for kento and nix nix coming back onto the roster after a stage off and I don't know, it's not like Nyx was crazy in the last year he was in, but it did really seem like the roster need experience, needed experience. And uh, also an IGL, I don't know if he's going to be full IGL, I, I imagine probably, based on him and the team and whatever. But yeah, he has way more experience than like the rest of the team combined. Benji has, what, four stages of NAL under his belt, Marmalade and Melted one apiece, and Kento zero. Uh, and so again, Nyx way more experience than all of them combined. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how he does. He he sort of lost his place in NAL on Mirage, and then he went and played in Challenger League for a stage, and now he's back. And, I mean, they were saying, yeah, he's learned a lot and changed a lot. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how they do, but it's uh, I don't think any anyone realistically can put them above last place in terms of predictions for power rankings or how they're going to place. Uh, it's, it is a bit of a pipe dream to do so, but it's entirely possible that they will come out and surprise. You know, that's not... That's not uh, that's not impossible, and it is best of ones. Crazy things can happen, but yeah, I think they do pretty noticeably look like the weakest team, and so move on from them. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to put either of these two teams here. We'll talk about them more in a second, but uh, even though they had really bad stages last stage, they were both really good last year in varying uh, to varying degrees in different areas so we'll move on to the next team. I think pretty clearly it's these two are next up, and... Uh, I, I don't know which one. I think these are pretty much interchangeable. But so we'll do we'll do Parabellum first. The other team to make roster changes, they uh, changed it out. Wimpy and Creators for Blaz and Gunner, and it seems like two pretty good pickups, two pretty strong fraggers. Blaz a little bit more tested than Gunner, with Gunner coming straight up from T3, but Blaz never in in his time in T1 seeing any success. Uh, as a team, yeah, he has some. He's had good games and good showings and whatever as a player. But let's see how he does on seemingly a little bit better team than uh, that heroic team was in EU. Heroics now good, I guess, but they were a completely different team. The org picked up a new squad. Uh, yeah, so uh, Parabellum, they just played in that Gamers Without Borders. They played against a couple of CL teams and they played against SSG. They only lost SSG both times as double elimination. And uh, it went to map three in the first one. It was the best out of three. And then they got 3 0 in the grand final. Technically, they only lost two maps because SSG had a map advantage, but, you know, still, they didn't get a map on them in the grand final. The last map that they played, I think it went to, it was like round 15, if maybe 14. I think it was round 15. So they were like one round away from going to the next map, but they did not. So 
Uh, maybe that's a testament to how strong SSG are looking. Uh, I think maybe a little bit more of a testament to how quickly Parabellum are progressing. It's unclear if, if either team were pulling punches a little bit because it was an unofficial thing, but that was a qualifier for quite a big tournament for quite a lot of money, so I imagine they weren't really pulling any punches. So I'd say pretty good showing from each of them, and that might be recontextualized a little bit as we see their performance through NAL. And those were like best of threes and then the best of five grand final, but we are back to best of ones. Uh, yeah, I think Parabellum, even though they look like they have a lot of potential, it just seems like it maybe that potential might not come out right away because they have two brand new pickups that have a little bit of playtime. You know, it's nice to get that experience in those against actual decent teams in semi-real games. But uh, yeah, now, now it's time for the actual league to qualify for the actual major and whatever. So yeah, we'll move on. Next to Beast Coast. So yeah, I do think people probably underrated them last stage. I apparently rated them completely properly, even if everything around them wasn't, wasn't uh, completely proper. And yeah, I, I guess the power ranking position I had them in was the same place they place, but that's not what the power rankings necessarily trying to do. Uh, this isn't how I'm predicting them to place, but I, I guess maybe it's about my best guess anyways. Yeah, Beast Coast, I feel like it might be more difficult for them to get away with some of the stuff they did last stage. They they play kind of crazy, especially compared to most of the other teams, if not all the other teams. I think for that reason, they're also like the most fun to watch, if not just one of the most fun to watch teams in NA. And yeah, I, I feel like maybe they're going to suffer a bit from the fact that now teams have a lot of VOD on them before uh, teams like Beast Coast and, and Xset especially being just like brand new teams. Teams really didn't have any VOD. Uh, some of these teams probably scrimmed against them. They'd, they'd been formed for a decent amount of time, but again, no like official, official VODs or anything. And now they have VODs, uh, even though a bunch of these teams, there is much more VOD on them than some of the other teams, uh, and that would be, I guess, the teams that went to the Major, and then also Parabellum and SSG, who played in the Gamers Without Borders. So there are six of these ten teams that have a decent amount. The, 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 the other four teams have quite a lot more VOD on them, and then even on each other and whatever, so we'll see who's better at reviewing VODs and whatnot. But yeah, Beast Coast, it, it feels like uh, Sweater and Surf and Drip like all three of them aren't going to be able to do what they did last stage uh, maybe two of them one of them whatever uh, but they all had really good performances at different times surf had some really pop-off games sweater pretty good overall i don't know if he had some dread any dreadful games but he i think some were kind of okay and then some pretty good ones especially i think against ssg was his biggest pop-off game and then drip had some really good plays and um put up really good numbers considering the roles that he plays so if one of those guys falters it i don't know maybe anthony or slash can pick up the slack we'll have to see but i think i think their biggest issue is now that teams are going to know a lot more about them and maybe they are also taking advantage of it being a really crazy meta last age with attacker repick just coming in but this meta might also be really crazy with azami and sends both coming in azami should be really impactful sends uh maybe less impactful but might also be extremely impactful we'll see um, yeah, they just seem like maybe they're a little bit more figured out, but uh, I'd, I'd be uh, I'd be pleasantly surprised to to have underrated them uh, this time around. Okay, so next up, uh, I think this is where TSM and Sonics come into play, and I think TSM is next up. Yeah, reigning world champion. I'm just gonna have to keep saying that until they're not the reigning world champions. But uh, it's an accolade that cannot be ignored. They had a really dreadful stage last stage, especially especially considering they had they literally just won SI into getting ninth place. It's not like they got fifth or sixth or whatever. Just missed out on they they got they got destroyed. They lost to Mirage. They lost to everybody except for they beat Parabellum and they beat who's the other one that they beat? It was oh Xset and that was I think that was a little bit of a fluke. Maybe if they had played them in any week except for week one, they might have lost. Maybe it came down to the map, whatever it was. Uh, TSM I guess only got their wins on Chalet. Not that they won Chalet every time they did also lose to Sonics, but whatever whatever the case, you know, they only got two wins on the board. Really poor performance for them. A really bad performance coming out from Bolo. I think Achieved also sort of under underperformed, but Bolo really, really bad stats uh, considering the roles he, pl he plays on and also considering uh, just how good of a player he is known to be. So I don't think it's really a question if TSM will bounce back. I think it's just unclear when they will bounce back. If it happens in the middle of the stage, that might be too late for them to make the major. If it happens at the beginning of the stage, uh, they might just get first place. Who knows? But uh, for now, considering how bad they were last stage, I'm going to put them down here. And then I think Sonics is next up above them. Uh, sort of similar stage to TSM. Pretty bad. They did get one more win on the board. And Sonics, I guess, does have the head-to-head -head against TSM. And that was even playing with a sub. So Goddess had to sub in last minute for Rexon. And Sonics still beat TSM. And it was on the only map that TSM had won on. So, uh, you know, pretty big victory for them. But I think... 
probably more representative of TSM struggles than any strength of Sonic because again if you're just not playing with your full team it's just like hard to really evaluate things so yeah I'm gonna put them above also for the fact that Sonic's had a, a decent bit more more impressive showing in NAL last year than TSM did TSM got fifth second fifth so they would have missed out on the major the first stage if there had been a major. There wasn't. There was uh, SI. And then uh, in the in the third stage, they did also miss out on the major. Sonics would have gone to the major had there been one first, the first stage. And then they also did go to the other two majors. They did bad at those majors, but whatever. And then SI, TSM definitely outperformed uh, Sonics, but Sonics was the second highest placing NA team. So good on them there. Yeah. Um, also for the fact, I think the, the biggest factor that I have t that Sonics is above TSM is the fact that they did bounce back. They ended their stage with two victories and the two losses they got before that were against DZ and Oxygen, two of the teams that went to the major and they were fairly close. 4-7 against DZ, 5-7 against Oxygen, both on border and both. Ap and apparently border was not a map that Sonics had even been playing, so I mean that's impressive in its own right. Had they won both of those games, they would have ended on a five-game win streak. So four devastating wins at the beginning into a five-game win streak, that would have been really big. It's not what happened, but still, I, I think they looked much more impressive in the second half of last stage than TSM did, so I think it's justified to put them above, and I don't know, maybe even they could go higher, but we haven't seen either of these teams play. They didn't play at the majors or, again, at the Gamers Without Borders, so it's unclear where they're going to be, and maybe that's all just to their benefit. They've had time to recuperate at TSM, people love to say oh yeah they were burnt out stage one they won't be burnt out stage two so they'll be really really good but it's it's definitely not that binary it's not that black and white uh they might need time to recuperate but you know maybe maybe that uh that will ring a little bit more true than it should and maybe they will just instantly be good it, but again i don't think it's so simple okay so we'll move on to the next i think i'm gonna put x set here i think they perhaps my they'll, they'll suffer a little bit from the same thing as beast coast well they where they will be a little bit more figured out um x set did suffer last stage from just being a brand new team and then getting two tough opponents in the first week and then they were crazy after that first week they went on a five win streak and then they only got their win streak ended by a couple of overtime losses against the top two teams astralis and oxygen so uh yeah they were crazy good last stage but i think they were maybe a little bit underestimated and uh well i mean they certainly won't be this stage they made they made it to playoffs at the major they only lost to eventually to the team that would get second place they lost to astralis and that was without their coach uh, behind them bodega there's that whole situation and that situation seemingly persists i mean he's he's got his one-year ban he can still work with the team and everything behind the scenes he's still their coach he helps them with strategies if, if that's what he does whatever he does behind the scenes but he cannot be there on stage to support them uh, i don't know vocally by yelling at the other team maybe that is to their benefit maybe that's not to their benefit but uh, certainly they can't call a timeout and talk to him and now i think they have another coach vivas who i assume will now be taking over doing that but uh, I think there's every reason to believe he won't be as effective as Bodega at doing that because, uh, I mean, that was Bodega's job, not his job. So uh, that might hurt them. And yeah, I also think the fact that teams will no longer be underestimating them and the fact that there's a lot more footage on them. Yeah, uh, just... I think there's reasons for them to be down here, but it's possible they get top four again. Uh, I, I don't know. I just feel like they're going to fall off a little bit here. That stage one will end up being a little bit of a flash in the pan, even though I still expect them to be quite strong. So that leaves the three team, the other three teams that went to the major, and then SSG, the team that most narrowly missed out on going to the major. And I kind of want to put SSG higher, but I, I think it's a little bit unfair. Uh, I think there is some merit to doing it based on the fact that we did just see them in, in that Gamers Without Borders tournament, and they, they took it fairly handily, only dropping a single map throughout the whole thing it was to parabellum and uh they looked pretty strong but again like it was a new parabellum so I, I don't know it's it's hard to really call they weren't at the major there's a reason they missed out on going to the major but uh they were extremely good stage two and three last year they were very very dominantly the top team i mentioned this in the previous video they only dropped like five points over the course of two stages which is insane uh but they do need to make a little bit of a comeback here they really really want to do it they shouldn't be stagnant now they should be very hungry after having missed out on their first major in a very long time and they played dark i think week two so that might be a little bit of a crazy match a little bit of a grudge match but uh i think probably just because of what happened last stage maybe it's unfair to put them above i i i kind of expect them to place like top three but uh, since i'm doing power rankings here i guess i'll put these these other teams above and i think i have dark zero the lowest of of those three and yeah, they were the team that won the major, and but they're also the team that placed third last stage. These two are extremely dominant. Astralis only losing to Oxygen, and Oxygen uh, pretty pretty clearly the second best team in terms of just regular season play. They did lose to 
They lost to SSG and they lost to Dark Zero. So in terms of head to head, you know, maybe I, I guess Dark Zero pretty clearly has has the nod when it comes to head to head because they have the head to head. But um, I think they've shown both of these teams versus this team that they are better equipped for the regular season play. Dark Zero always seems to have some sort of issues. They're never like pretty securely in that top four. Uh, the first stage last year, they didn't make top four. And then the second stage, they, they were like third or fourth place. And they had a really, really good record in terms of just wins and loss. They were like eight and one, but like six of their wins were in overtime. So they missed a lot of points. So, I mean, that's just one aspect of the of the system going against them. And then also, you know, they, they won the major. And uh, so they won a lot of best of threes or a couple of best of threes. They won a best of five, but uh, that's not what we're playing. They were also good in the group stage. Uh, they topped the group of death, which was best of ones. <laughs> a lot of them were in overtime, uh, but still, nonetheless, they beat some pretty good teams there. But you know, it, it still just seems like Dark Zero is not as built for best of ones as these other two teams. So I have these two, and yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna have them in the same order they were last stage. So I don't think this is very uh, very brave of me to say. I think this is a pretty lukewarm uh, opinion on the on the rankings. But uh, maybe my maybe my uh, my opinions would be a little bit crazier if I was predicting the placements and not doing power rankings. Yeah, so Oxygen, they made top four of the major. They were second place from NA. They looked really, really strong up until the point that they didn't when they got crushed by Astralis. Uh, really weirdly, a 7-3 and a 7-1, just devastation. Just, you know, 14 to four rounds was crazy. Uh, Oxygen does have the head-to-head -head over Astralis, so we have a little bit of a weird chain here where Dark Zero beat Astral uh, Oxygen, Oxygen beat Astralis. Uh, I, I guess Astralis beat Dark Zero, but yeah, Astralis were crazy in in best of ones in last stage. They only dropped the one game, and a lot of their games were really dominant. They so they lost three points by losing Oxygen, then they lost two more points by going to overtime two times. Uh, it it was a bit. It turns out that playing against Astralis was just straight up a lit, litmus test for how you were going to place, and not that this could have been predicted at all, but in hindsight, and I'm referring to numbers that you can't see on the screen, but I'll just kind of go down the line. Um, Astralis first place, Oxygen second place, the only team to beat Astralis, and then third and fourth place, uh, not on the power rankings, but how they placed last stage, were Dark Zero and Astralis. Those were the only two teams to take, to take uh, Astralis to overtime, so they placed third and fourth, and then SSG got five rounds against against Astralis, so they placed fifth, and then uh, Beast Coast got four rounds against them, so they placed sixth, and then the bottom four teams all got three or fewer rounds against them, so that'd be uh, Parabellum, Mirage, TSM, and and Sonic, so they all got pretty well destroyed, and so they ended up at the bottom, and that's just a little bit of a pattern, and so yeah, I mean, it's really good to dismantle the teams that end up at the bottom, and sure, I mean, you'd love to also dismantle the teams that ended up at the top, but they did beat most of them. Uh, Astralis losing to Dark Zero, maybe that wouldn't happen if they played a best of one, I I mean obviously well um they they won the first map so i guess in that sense but they would have probably played a different map had it been that even a best of three they would have lost had they not played beyond map three uh they won the first map and then they lost the next two but probably they would have played different uh, they might have played different maps had it been a best of three whatever um so they might have won uh in the end you know it was dark zero that prevailed and a lot of that might have been their stamina it might have been their longevity uh, both in terms of stamina and also in terms of their players being super tenured, uh, Canadian especially, and then, well, Eclipse is like Mr. Siege at this point. Even if people don't realize it, he's probably played more than like anybody else. Uh, Hyper been around, been around a really long time, and Jaron Pamzu a little bit new, but uh, still been around for a bit now. Whereas Astralis has Shuttle, who's been around for a very long time, but the other four players are not quite so much. And I don't know, I guess I'm getting a little bit off topic here. Is there anything else I want to talk about? Oh, I hope not. But um, hmm, I think I think this is about what the, what the average opinion will be. Uh, I think, once again, Mirage, definitely, you got to put them at the bottom. You can maybe like switch these two. Uh, Sonics and TSM, maybe like up or down a little bit, depending on how confident you are uh, or whatever. And I'm trying to be objective here. Xset, maybe, I don't know, maybe up or down. Space Station could be higher. Dark Zero could be on top, based uh, depending on how much you, how much you favor results from the major from non best of ones. But okay, I think I think this is probably pretty good. But again, I'll say it one more time: this is not exact. This isn't how I expect thing, teams to place. This is just their power rankings going to week one, and then well, the power rankings probably will will look a lot different after week number one potentially. So yeah, that's gonna do it. Uh, if you have your own opinions, let me know. If you have any other comments regarding, I don't know, whatever. Also let me know, and a like and a sub, you know, they are appreciated. So with all of that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video.